you much, uh, Lenny, and thanks very much, everyone, for joining. Really great to meet all of you. Um, I'm talking here from uh, Johannesburg in South Africa. Um, yeah, so uh, definitely great to be, be chatting to everybody today on a topic that I'm very passionate about. Um, and yeah, so again, as uh, you said, any questions uh, that, that you have, please post them. Um, I'm taking quite a high level view of of, of the topic, I really wanted to introduce the problems we're really having in the way that we manage businesses today. Um, and it hasn't really changed much in the last 50 to 60 years. Um, and the challenges that businesses will face into the future, particularly since uh, COVID-19 uh, hit all of us uh, just over a year ago, um, when it really started having its, its huge impact on the globe. So. Yeah, looking really looking forward to this. So let me uh, share my screen with you and uh, and and go into the presentation. Um, I really hope that that you enjoy it and um, and looking forward to the session. So let me just get get going here. Just want to change the display settings quickly. Great, thanks very much. So again, yeah, we're based in South Africa. Um, uh, Lynn already, you know, mentioned the, the work we do in the Agile community um, over and above the winner of the World Agility Forum Award last year that, that we're very proud of in terms of the work that we do in the Agile community globally. Um, I was also very much involved in the Agile 20 Reflect Festival, uh, which uh, finished in February. It was over the whole of February for those of you that, that uh, we're not aware of the festival. It was a, a global festival over the whole month of February, celebrating the uh, 20th anniversary of the signing of the Agile Manifesto. When we first started looking at putting this event together around about September last year, we, were really, we would really have been glad to get 100 events on our calendar. Uh, all of these events were free. Um, at the end of February, uh, when, we, when we finished off the festival, we had had over 800 events um, from, from over 100 countries all over the world, different languages, different time zones, and as I say, every single one of them free. Um, so yeah, spend a heck of a lot of time working on the Agile community um, and growing that community. So just have a look at the title, celebrating, you know, a lot of people talk the new normal. Um, I don't believe anything is normal about the way that we live today. I mean, we today we we um, we actually uh, deliver projects. I delivered my first project last year to a client, um, never ever meeting them face to face. It was all through Zoom. Um, everything was done through Zoom. We do a lot of workshops. Uh, one particular in a, uh, called the Enterprise Business Agility Strategist Workshop. Um, and we deliver that online now. It always used to be in person. And I was, I was worried that the online version versus the in person would not be as rich. But in fact, we've got big, better ratings for the online version than we did for the in person version. So things have radically changed. And I think organizations understand that. I think organizations are thinking about that all the time. But I think today, the purpose of today's session is really to get the focus around. How do we survive in this new world that we live in? Um, you know, where speed to market has just become so much more important. I don't think agile has become any more or less important than it was before COVID-19. I think COVID-19 just really showcased how we needed to change. And, you know, I always talk about three types of businesses. Um, you know, those that make things happen, those that watch things happen, and then there's those that wonder what happened. And we want to make sure that that organizations we speak to are not in that third group of people who just suddenly are no longer around because they didn't react quickly enough to the changes around them, not only around COVID-19, but all of the changes that are coming uh, forth. I think it's uh, 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 Justin Trudeau, the, the Prime Minister of Canada, who had a, a address to the World Economic Forum in, in 2018, said, you know, the world has never changed as fast as it's changing today. 
but today is the slowest it'll ever change into the future. So things are changing radically and it's only those organizations that get to grips with that that'll really thrive into the future. So talking about COVID-19, you know, many people will say that this was a black swan event. And the question really is, is was it a black swan event? Because when you have a look at, um, you know, a, a video that Bill Gates did on the 3rd of April in 2015, which had over 30 million views, um, he predicted that we would have a uh, pandemic within the next five to 10 years. Um, and he questioned whether we were really ready for it. Um, so, you know, with, with the way that uh, we've got a global village now and, you know, people travel around and, you know, there's all of these um, different uh, societies that are doing things differently. It's in no surprise that we actually did eventually end up with a pandemic that is, that is, that has gutted the world a little bit to a large extent. So one of the, the things that we often talk about is, yes, one cannot predict the future, but you can, to a large extent, start forecasting around it and start looking at that future and saying, so if we do have a pandemic, you know, let's say it was 2015, if we do have a pandemic, how are we as a, as a, as a, as a global uh, community going to deal with it? How are we as a country going to deal with it? And how are we as organizations going to deal with it? I have to say that in, 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 in again, I obviously don't have the experiences of all the other countries, but in South Africa, our, um, our government was fairly uh, strong onto the case. We, we went into lockdowns, uh, quite severe lockdowns at one stage, very quickly. Um, we, our companies, um, you know, had, had, were uh, able to adapt very, very quickly. And, I, and one of the things I'm very proud of in terms of our South African companies is that not many of them went and actually started just retrenching employees um, or, or terminating their services. There were some obviously in things like the restaurant industry that got, you know, that were just literally wiped out. I mean, at one stage, our restaurants were just not allowed to be open at all, um, you know, where they had no choice but to lay off uh, a lot of their, their staff. But they, they've also, some of them have adapted really well and have brought those staff back on. So again, COVID-19, we should have known something like this was coming. I, I have a very uh, interesting uh, personal doctor and he believes that we will most probably have one of these about once a year where a new version of this will come on um, and we need to be ready for it. And I think the, uh, hopefully the, the, the world is a little bit better prepared, but when I have a look at what's going on in certain countries, we're still not taking this uh, this this pandemic seriously enough. Um, and I don't think until it hits home to people personally that, that you do take it seriously. So yeah, we need to balance the economic uh, um, you know, capabilities of countries with, with keeping people healthy. But I think the next time around, hopefully we've learned. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the South African politicians from many, many years ago, a guy called Jan Smuts, he said, the one thing we learn from history is that we never learn from history and I'm really hoping that's not the case into the future.